So here is the new resistance bands platform that I recently purchased off of Amazon to replace the step platform I've been using. This one, while it is more expensive, is a bit more premium um, in its design, but does have some pros and cons I wanted to go over in case you were looking into something similar to this in your home gym. So the step platform I used before this was still an excellent option, and here are some reasons I really liked it. So the first reason I like the step platform is that it is quite a bit cheaper, almost 50%. The step platform online is around the $50 mark where the GEC or GEKU board is about $93 as of shooting this video. Also the step platform allows you to get about four inches of pre-stretch in the band as that's how high the platform was off the ground when you stood on top of it. This one, however, you only get about 1.5 inches. So if you are someone who is taller, this might help you. But if you're already struggling to get some of that pre-stretch to begin your exercises and you're shorter, this might not be a great option. However, this video is all about the Geku platform. So let's jump in and take a look at what you get as well as some of the specs once you take a look at it. First off, you will get the Geku platform itself. Again, made fully of bamboo wood and feels a bit more premium than I thought. With that, you'll get an anti-slip mat. This you can just sticker on top of the platform itself. It does have a sandpaper-like uh, material or texture to it. So if you want to use this, I would recommend using shoes. It actually says to use shoes in the instructions if you are gonna use it as well, as it could rub off on your feet pretty hard otherwise. So for me, I just didn't put it on at all as I like to work out barefoot, so I didn't bother with it, but it did come with my shipment. You will also get scratch proof pads. So these are little pads that you put on the bottom to help protect your floor, especially if you are on a wood surface. Now with the step platform, I didn't have these. I had to go out and buy separate felt pads um, with this, but in this case, you get them right from the company, which is great to see. And lastly, you will also get an exercise booklet. If you wanna learn some of the exercises you can do with the platform, you can also just look online and see all the other ones I've done in the past. But if you need like quick, quick reference, feel free to use that little booklet. All right, so now we're gonna compare the step platform against the Geku platform to see what is the same or different about each option. So looking at the step platform first, the entire base from one end to the other is 28.5 inches. However, it does slightly indent as it goes up um, through the height. So the actual standable area that you can use is 26 inches. And with that, you have a width of 14.5 inches, but again, with that slight angle up, you only have an area to stand on of about 11.5 inches. Now the height off the ground for the step platform is four inches and weighs four pounds and 12 ounces when I measured it on my scale. Now jumping over to the Geku resistance bands board, it comes in as follows. So for this, you have a different issue in terms of how much area you can stand on because there are indentations on each side where the bands go into. So for the actual full width of the base platform, you have 23.75 inches but with the indent or the area you can actually stand on, it comes in at about 22 inches. So that is a difference of about four inches of area you can stand on lengthwise, meaning that your squats are gonna be pushed in quite a bit if you like the wider ones from before. Now the width of the board, which you can actually stand on fully, is 12.75 inches. The height of the board itself is 1.5 inches, and the weight comes in at eight pounds and three ounces. So the big highlights there are, of course, the height of 1.5 inches is a lot less than the four inches you got before. And then the weight is nearly double at eight pounds and three ounces versus four pounds and 12 ounces. So I hope that helped you look over both options to see which one you might prefer over one or the other. Now, again, the Geku board is made fully of bamboo wood. So again, holding this thing, it does feel very premium overall. Everything feels well made. I don't think it would fall apart. I think that Geku actually put in a lot of work to make this thing feel like a great product. And also it states that it can withstand up to 600 pounds. I have no idea what the step could withhold. Luckily it's withheld whatever I've used with the resistance bands for it, but this actually says it should be able to hold a weight of 600 pounds. So with that, we're gonna jump into what I like and don't like starting with what I like or the pros. So first off, it is a solid bamboo wood build. I really like this. While it does make it heavier, the feel of this is really, really nice. There are times where I kind of feel like the step is a bit cheap and just it's all plastic, but with this bamboo one, I really like the upgrade to the wood finish. Also, all throughout this base platform, everything is curved. So I've received comments in the past where um, people have used boards that had sharper edges, which actually cut into their bands and snap them. 
Um, even on the step platform, there is a little ridge that goes around. Luckily the bands for me with the bars I use never actually touch it. But if you ever actually came across and put it down on it, it could potentially wear out the band itself. So things to watch out for are those hard, sharp edges. But luckily the Geku platform got rid of all of those. And lastly, it comes with pads for you right out of the box. I do use this on a wood surface. So now I don't have to go out and buy any more. It comes with six that you just put on the bottom and you are ready to go. And with that, let's jump over to the things that I don't like. My big one is the length of the board. Doing squats with this took a little bit of getting used to as it does bring in your feet again, quite a few inches, like two to three inches um, on each side is quite a big difference. If you're thinking that before you were kind of constrict on each side, now you really are. So you really have to focus on the form while using your feet closer together in order to get the results you were looking for. Also for me, I think the price is a little high. It is $93 and again, it's made all of wood and everything, but I think the price tag for this should be around $75. The 93 is a bit high for me. If they could drop it to around 75, 80, I think you'd have a better price tag on your hands. So I'm going to add another section here, which is the good and bad because it's kind of both in one, but let's take a look. So the first one is that the height of the board has been both good and bad for me. So for the good, when doing exercises like standing overhead presses, now I don't have to stretch the band so much that it snaps. If you saw my Sunpow video, this is the exact exercise I snapped the band on because it just couldn't withstand that um, the stretch I had overhead anymore. So now that I've reduced it by about two and a half to three inches, I should be able to push a little further without as much risk of snapping. Also, when lying on the platform, it does feel a lot better as you aren't four inches off the ground kind of arching your back over it. Now you're much closer to the floor and you can just lie right on it. You might want something like a small pillow just because it is wood, might not be the most comfortable thing in the world, but at least it allows you to stay more or closer to the ground to keep it in position versus the awkwardness of trying to get set up and ready to go. Now the bad part of the height for me is how much pre-stretch you do lose with this setup. From before, I really liked having the four inch pre-stretch for the majority of the exercises. Maybe it's a little too much for some, but it was really nice because again, you get some tension in the band almost immediately when using it. For this one, on going back, especially for things like suitcase squats, this is where you can see it and feel it the most if you don't have that pre-stretch. However, losing that, is quite a big deal. I think somewhere around like two to three inches should really be the target for most companies looking to build these in the future to have some kind of pre-stretch. Four might be a little overkill, but I did actually enjoy it with the step platform a bit. And it's been a bit of a learning curve here trying to get used to it with the Geku platform. And again, if you're already really short or shorter than me, I'm 5'11", so if you're shorter than me, this might even be more apparent to you trying to keep tension in the bands. All right, so that's about it with this platform. Overall, I think it is a very good first product from Geku to try and get into the space. I was looking at other products out there, um, like Harambe and Clench Fitness who have other boards, but they can be upwards of 200 to $300 just for the base platform. We're getting to territory that if I bought that, I'd basically just be paying for um, the X3 bar that already exists or the X3 system that's already out there. So like, and that's like 500 bucks. So if I bought all that and all the other equipment I have, it would already be getting into their territory. So I like that this is under hundred. I think it's still a little overpriced, but I do like this direction and the materials they use to make this. The bamboo is great. Um, making sure that there's no sharp edges is awesome. I'm um, providing the uh, protectors on the bottom are great. There's just some things I'd like to enhance. Like I think the board should be a little bit bigger. We need to make it a little bit longer on each side. Though the width doesn't matter that much. It's really just the length and increase it by about an inch or inch and a half to really feel like you can still get that pre-stretch. Now Geku may have made the decision to make the board this size for travel reasons. However, every time I say this is good for travel, I never actually travel with these things. Um, it's just one of those things that is like, yeah, it's great for traveling. Bands are great. You can just throw them in a bag, travel with them, go to the beach outside. I don't care. You can go cross country and do it. However, I never actually take them with me. Um, I think like one or two times I ever have, the one time I did get it taken, it um, got searched in the bag, which was fine. They, they were like, it's fine, but they had to go and search it because they weren't, they weren't quite sure what was inside when they saw things like the J-hook handles. So something to be aware of. Um, so traveling is not that big a thing for me, but it might be for you. So it could be better in your suitcase, but it still weighs eight pounds. So it's not like it's the lightest thing to carry in a suitcase. And to round things out, I have tested three different bands with this and they all fit, which is awesome. So I tested the Sunpow bands, the Undersun bands, and the Serious Steel bands. Yes, I did rebuy them. I will be doing another review on them, but I did test all three of those in this and they all fit. So no matter which one you have, all different levels, you can use it in this as well. Unless you have something that's crazy thick or the width of the 
resistance bands is really thick, most should fit in this um, pretty easily. But that about wraps it up for the Geku resistance bands board. There's good and bad things about it. I hope they do make some kind of a version two with some of the improvements from this and we'll see how it goes in the future.